Good morning, I've just jumped into the office after what was a pretty good gym session. My gym's been a little bit up and down recently. I've been sticking with it and at every opportunity I've been forcing myself out of bed. It's definitely paid off because a couple of weeks ago I had a week of not training and it made me feel so crap. Getting back in again at any given opportunity has certainly been a blessing. So I'm feeling good. And I'm also feeling good because today, this video is in partnership with DGI, and I'm really excited to talk to you about this product. Now, we're currently sitting here a few weeks ahead of when this video is going out, and that's because this product is currently embargoed, but I'm allowed to sit down and talk to you about it now, and that product is the new DGI OM5. Now, some of you may remember I worked on the DGI OM4. I had a fantastic trip to Wales and it really opened up my way of thinking about creating content actually because the practicality of this device is like nothing else. And I think that you only have to carry around a camera bag for a day to appreciate how taxing it can be. Now, the DJI OM5, as you can see, is a slightly different shape to that of the OM4. It's certainly lighter also, which is fantastic. Now, what is a gimbal? For those of you that are into content creation, I know that you'll know exactly what that is. A gimbal is a device that's used to create stable content. And I think that I speak for all of us when I say that there's nothing worse than watching a piece of content that's really shaky. It's very distracting. And so this is a bit of kit that's gonna help stabilize your video footage and make it a more pleasurable viewing experience. Now, the DJI have improved a few of their functions. As you can see, they've also altered the design quite a lot. One of the larger differences that this device offers is a telescopic pole, which is game-changing. It's essentially given us a third arm, which is gonna become very useful. I can see footage as I'm like I'm traveling down like a, a busy street. I can just lift the camera above everyone's head and coast through, which is gonna bring a nice dynamic to my content. So that's something that is really impressive. And uh, it also has the ability to be able to flex the head. So you can tilt it 90 degrees down, and then you can also have it straight up. So for example, if you wanted to have the phone facing onto you and you wanted that extension so you can talk to the camera from above, then you've now got that ability. I think that's a really, really cool function actually that they've added to this device. As before, this is a pocket-sized gimbal, which again, just feeds into that practicality. Um, they've also got the functions they had before, such as dynamic zoom, hyperlapse, time-lapse. They've got the spin function. They've also had an improvement on Active Track. Previously, it was Active Track 3.0. We're now on Active Track 4.0. And I actually want to demonstrate to you how Active Track works. So we're going to go into a little bit of footage of me filming Porter using the Active Track function. So as you can see, it's done an absolutely fantastic job of creating stable and well-tracked footage of a moving object. When I say object, I do of course mean Porter. This is a function that really gives you the ability to be able to sort of focus on your movements, obstacles that are around you. And the active track itself does all of the hard work. It keeps the subject center of frame so you don't have to worry about that really difficult and technical hand movement during that filming session. So it's great to see that they've not just kept but they've also improved on this function. Now, this DJI also comes in two colors. Um, you can see on this box here, we have a white DJI and the one that's sitting next to me, the gray DJI OM5. So you can now have the option of obviously getting these in two colors. I'm gonna quickly talk to you about what you get inside this box. So of course, instructions, very useful. Next, you get a charger lead, the DJI OM5 itself with some feet which you will need these feet when you're gonna be calibrating the gimbal. It makes life a lot easier. You've also got a wrist strap here, so if you wanna attach it to yourself, use this adjustable tag to make sure you don't drop it or lose it. A really lovely, convenient carry case to make sure the kit itself doesn't get damaged in transit. So that's what you get inside the box. Also, you can also buy some accessories, including this light here. This is actually really clever. So on the back of this light, you can see they've got the magnetic quick attachment, which is, as you can see, what I've got currently on the back of my phone. However, this one 
A little bit chunkier, and that's because it's got a battery in the back. It also has the adjustable grips for different phone sizes, and of course, the light. So if you're talking to the camera and you want to add a little bit of light to yourself, if it's, say, in the middle of the night when you're filming, then this is obviously a great little addition that you can add on to your DJI OM5. And also the other DJI OM series products. Hopefully you can see this from there, but we have, of course, the record button, and then you can flip the camera so it's facing you or facing out, depending whether you want to be speaking to the camera and seeing yourself, or you want to be filming out of the main cameras on the phone. And then you've got your joystick just here, the lights that illuminate how much power or battery life you've got left, the rear trigger button, which you can use to recenter the camera. And then just here, this little toggle is zoom in and zoom out. And then you've got the power on and on function, which has the M on it. This can also be used as a short key to switch from photo and video. So if you're out and about filming and you decide, oh, I really want to take a photo of something, you can literally just click the M, take the photo and jobs are good. So just before we finish up, I want to give a little bit more clarity to some of the functions that I referenced earlier on. And one of those is the dynamic zoom. Now this is a really clever function that gives this very weird warping effect. Um, so partly because I want to play around with it, I'm going to quickly share with you a little bit of B-roll of me showcasing that dynamic zoom function. So as you can see, it's quite a fun way of creating some different style of content. It's not something that you see that often, which is something that I really like because it can bring a different element into your content. Well, this next feature, I just thought it'd be a lot easier if I quickly flipped the camera around and showed you on the actual device itself. So right here, there's a brand new feature called the OM5 Shot Guide, which as I understand it is an industry first. If you take a look at the top left-hand corner, you'll see there's like a movie play button with a star on it. If we click on that, that's then gonna take us straight into shot guides, which essentially will recognize the environment that you're in, and then it will recommend sequences to fit the subject. So whether it be a pet or a person, or even like a landscape, and we'll come up with sequences and ideas of how you can create content. As you can see at the top, you've got a massive selection of different environments. You've got park, nature, beach, city, lifestyle, food, home, and so on. You get recommended templates as well, so it's never been easier to go from shooting to editing to then sharing your piece of content. So just to give you an example of how this will actually work, if you go through onto, let's just say for example, you select park because that's the environment that you're in, and you select trip, so you're walking around and you wanna kind of share a piece of content that goes through the sort of moments and memories of you going through that park and you'll just be working your way through and then all of a sudden you'll see a clip that you really like and you're like oh I, I quite like this I want to know how to create this shot click apply and then automatically the phone will readjust itself into the correct settings that are needed to then record that sequence and then it will show on the left hand side the final clip and then it will show you an example of how you achieve that. So essentially the hand motion and movements that you need to do to get that shot. So it kind of walks you through the process of how to create content, which is actually something that's incredibly useful if you see something and you're like, wow, I'd love to know how that's done. Is it done in post or is it done in camera? In this case, you can see that this has been done in camera. So it's a very useful function that the guys have added to this app. And like I said, there's just so much you can do, so many different environments and ways in which you can create content. So you're never going to be left stuck with uh, ways of capturing and creating pieces of content with so much to explore on here. And lastly, I just want to quickly show you how portable and functional this piece of kit is because it really has changed the way that I think about creating content. And I've definitely been traveling a lot lighter ever since getting my hands on one of the DJI OM products. So this is the uh, functionality and practicality of this device. So as you can see, it's super small, really easy to carry around, and also it's very quick to assemble and disassemble, which means that when you're on the move, there is no time wasted. So to summarize, you've got the three axis stabilization, you've got the portability 
of this piece of kit. Super practical, easy to move around in. And of course, as I demonstrated earlier, you've got the Active Track 4.0. So if you do want to find out any more information or check out the product, then of course I'll be leaving it down below in the description box. But I'm going to get busy with my day now because I would like to get out for a round of golf later on today. Well, this morning marks the start of the GQ Men of the Year Awards and also my two day stay down in London. I'm gonna be heading down to the Shangri-La uh, ahead of the awards this evening. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna to be spending the day in London because in the evening, I've got the Brunello Cuccinelli event, which I'm really looking forward to attending actually. Like I'm a massive fan of the uh, designs and the tones, the palette that Brunello do are just so beautiful. So that should be a really lovely event as well. First things first, I'm gonna go and get my hair cut and myself sharpened up ahead of the GQ Men of the Year Awards. And then we're gonna get busy heading down to London. Yeah. You can have your music on that's fine. Yeah, I don't know what's happened to it. All oh, right, I thought you turned it off. No, it's done its own thing. currently on our way down to the Shard which you can see just there we're gonna be going over London Bridge Do you know what I can't remember the last time I went over London Bridge didn't it get stuck up or something recently yeah we're here aren't we yeah this is it, it, is. Oh, yeah, it is. right I've just checked into my room here at the Shangri-La in the Shard and I thought I'd give you a little room tour we've got an absolutely beautiful room here so first things first as we come in I've had my tuxedo dropped off with a new pair of shoes that look absolutely beautiful. Gonna be wearing this this evening, of course, for the awards. Here on the left, we have a wardrobe where I'll obviously be unloading very soon. You know what I'm like with um, sorting out all of my bits. So, oh, we've got an iron in here. That is always a good sign. And then we've got a TV, coffee station, mini bar down here. Of course, as you saw the bed and then a dedicated workstation with what is an unbelievable view over of London City and then a little chill area I'll probably have a coffee here in the morning boss very kindly dropped off a boss watch as well as boss tonic boss infinite boss classic and boss EDP so I'm gonna be picking one of those this evening I think we've actually got a little chat later with somebody that's gonna share some insights in the fragrance to try and help us pick our fragrance of the evening I'm gonna be honest I'm warming towards EDP it's a very special occasion and uh, I think this is gonna be the fragrance that I'm gonna be wearing this evening and then if we spin around here oh look at that little boss cake love that uh, if we spin around here into the bathroom you'll see we've got a sink and the very famous bathtub that you get here you can have a bath for the view and then we've got a toilet one of those toilets that has like all the bells and whistles heater bidet phone full works and then we've got a shower in here so this is gonna be my home for the next 24 hours. So yeah, as you can see, it's four o'clock. We've got a lot to do. Uh, we've got some content to be creating. I'm also gonna go and meet the team from Boss on a slightly higher floor in a second. And um, I also need to publish this evening's YouTube video, which would have been last week's video. So um, yeah, got a lot to crack on with, but it's gonna be a fantastic evening and I'll be checking back with you uh, just before we head out to have some food here at the Shard actually and some drinks with the team uh, when we're all tuxed up. So I'll catch you in a second. So as you can see, I'm all tuxedoed up, ready for the evening. We're just about to head to the Shangri-La suite to meet the rest of the boss team. I'll show you around in the room as well because it's absolutely stunning in there. God, it's been a while since I've, uh, been suited up like this. Well, welcome to the master suite. Look at the wardrobe in there. So we're just about to arrive to the GQ Man of the Year Awards with Boss. Quite a lot of people outside. Must be waiting for the big man, Tim. <laughs> Let's oh, be flashing lights. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, wow. Got our little passes. We're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Please. And the left again. And straight ahead, please. 
<laughs> wow, this is looking insane. This is flying, bro. We caught COVID. We did. Do you remember that? Oh my God. Uh, face masks, sanitizer, uh, isolation, YouTube. Conspiracy theories, Pornhub, <laughs> Bridgerton, Pornhub. That's so true. It's the guy from Bridgerton. Hi, how are you? Alright, Sabrina. I give you my friend, my brother, man. Your standout performer of the year, Mr. Reggae Jean Page. Receive the standout performer in such stylish company. I mean, in an evening hosted by the Elbers, it doesn't get more stylish than that. God damn! God damn! God damn! Um, I mean, I don't know, it's a lot. I used to really, really, really hate standing out. Um, when I was a kid, I used to stand in front of the mirror with my dad's hair oil and like desperately try and comb my hair straight into a side party. Because um, when I stood next to him, people noticed me in a very specific way. I stood out. Um, I didn't quite know what that was about. I figured it must have been the hair. It's all the glamorous people in the magazines with straight hair and side plans like my dad. And the secret agents and the superheroes with straight hair like my dad. And in these places of glamour and romance and aspiration, even my kids' imagination, I didn't, I stood out. And I didn't like how it felt the way that I stood out. But I'm learning that standing out is important because this year I was talking to a bunch of students from my acting school about how to update the curriculum that excludes them. And they said that they had seen me in these places of glamour and aspiration and romance. And I'd stood out and people had noticed me and they had noticed me. And they'd seen that they could do the same and they could do better because I stood out. So, this is for everyone coming up. This is for them, this is for everyone who is standing up, standing tall, standing proud, standing out, and getting your elbows out and making space for others to do the same. Thank you very much. <laughs> to reggae. Worst dressed in GQ in 2013. <laughs> and from that point, whenever they were like, do you want to go to GQ Wars? I was like, oh, it's probably for the car. <laughs> and I've got to say, like, coming, <laughs> coming here tonight, I, like, I've been honestly, like, so, heart, like, touched to be invited. And there's so many important people here who are way, way more important than, than I am. Or, you know, it's, it, I, I, just, I just feel really honored to be here. And congratulations for every one of your awards. shouted out. So I wanted to say that we had fantastic clinical trial support across Liverpool, Sheffield, Newcastle, Southampton, Bristol, London, Birmingham, Hull, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Cambridge, Nottingham and Cardiff, with Paul in Portsmouth, Coburn in Kiel, and yes, yes, in Glasgow. This was a UK effort to get this UK community to come 
come together to get a vaccine to tackle this problem. And most importantly, surrounding all this activity in all of those UK towns and cities were our volunteers. Uh, but in all guys, you know, we've got to celebrate the heroes that are here tonight. But if you've got a drink at your table, if you drink or you don't drink, let's put a glass up for those heroes that are not here tonight and that are being heroes every fucking day. Put a drink up. Well, good morning from the Shangri-La. I'm just currently chilling by the windows, enjoying the city views. It actually doesn't look like a bad day, to be honest with you. It looks a little bit hazy, but I'm not sure if that's all the glass um, in between me and outside. But anyway, last night, absolutely fantastic evening. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. It's always an honor to be invited to those kind of events and you get to share the room with some incredibly talented and uh, special people. There were some true legends there last night. I did say hello to a few people and I'm not feeling that bad this morning. I thought I was going to be feeling a little worse for wear but I actually feel fine. So I'm going to um, chill at the hotel for a little bit, grab myself a coffee, edit up a few photos from um, last night and then as I mentioned, um, this evening we're going to be heading to the Brunello Cuccinelli event. It's going to be a good day, but the hotel stay was really nice. Absolutely incredible room. Like These views are just absolutely nuts. Like Just watching London City go by. It's such a great view. And this morning I was just sitting working from this desk, just looking out. That's one view you wouldn't get bored of, isn't it? Wow, look down there in those gardens. Very cool. I'm gonna get checked out and uh, crack on with my day. This is today's outfit of the day. I'm just gonna change up for a grey mile roll neck later on this evening ahead of the event, but this will do me for a couple of coffees. So I'm just finishing up exporting last night's images. Have a look, there we go. Enjoying a coffee here. Well, I've just got changed into uh, this evening's outfit because we're going to be heading over to get some food actually at a place called On The Bat. I haven't had anything from there for so long and they do this beautiful fried chicken. I'm going to go there and enjoy some food with James and then we're going to be heading to the Brunello Cuccinelli event this evening, which I'm really looking forward to actually. I've just found out it's the one year anniversary for the new Mason on Bond Street, so it's going to be a good one. Got some beef bao buns. Ooh, phenomenal. What's this chicken called? Yang Yum. Yang Yang. Mm. Lovely. So good. Well, we just finished off shooting for today's OOTD, which um, I'm feeling is on the verge of autumnal. Like certainly from uh, the waist up. It's definitely an autumnal look. On our way to Bond Street now. They also won an award last night at the GQ Men of the Year Awards. They were um, the winners of Designer of the Year. So the Brunello family are actually gonna be here this evening. I do get a chance to speak to them. I will be uh, congratulating them personally, which will be very nice. Let's go and check out the event and uh, see what the store has to offer. single shoe here right now I would take home and Mr. Brunello Cuccinelli himself Just jumped back into the cab after the Brunello Cuccinelli event. It was absolutely lovely. I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Brunello Cuccinelli and also his daughter, who was absolutely lovely. They've actually invited me to Italy, so I feel like I'm in there with the family now. I might uh, have to take them up on that offer. They're uh, based not too far from Tuscany. Um, 
I can't remember the exact name of the village. It's a very small village in Italy, um, which is really cool actually to have such a globally recognized brand come from such a small town or small village. Um, and I'm just obsessed with their stuff. They use beautiful fabrics, the most stunning tones and color palettes and everything that they do just looks awesome. So I'm a big, big fan of the brand. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed. I'll be making some purchases from Brunello very soon. Yeah, it was just a fantastic evening. So I am going to head back to the Shard, pick up my suitcase and my suit from last night's event, and then I'm gonna get back and see Lydia, Porter and Looney, which I'm looking forward to because it's been a good 48 hours since I've seen them, so it should be nice. I've got a golf lesson in the morning, and then this weekend I'm just gonna catch up with my friend Neil, I've not seen for ages, my best mate Neil, um, and I don't know what else is in store, but there'll be stuff going on anyway. So yeah, lovely, lovely evening. And if you do want to check out Brunello Cuccinelli, they're based on New Bond Street, uh, Mayfair. So uh, make sure you head in. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful store. They've got both men's, women's and children's sections. Uh, so if you're feeling super bougie and you want to buy your child a Brunello Cuccinelli item, then make sure you check out that. It's at the back upstairs behind the women's section. Um, and if you feel like treating your partner, then I'm sure it will be a very well received gift. Well, as you can see, I'm currently in my office again. I've been working all day. It's been very productive. Lydia's actually out with Carrie this evening. They're uh, down in Watford area. They've gone to the Grove, I believe. I'm basically looking after the animals. So Porter's currently on the floor doing his best job at trying to destroy a toy. Um, I've just been editing up this video and I noticed in that last clip, I sound like a boy that had just sucked a helium balloon. I'm not sure what happened on that audio just then, but I was filming on my phone and for some reason, it's just extremely high pitched and also a little bit fast. Um, it's very bizarre, but anyway. Um, I've just jumped on just to say thank you for watching. I hope you did enjoy this week's video. Next week, as you know, I'm gonna be heading to Wentworth for the Pro-Am and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous about it. I had a lesson on Friday and it went so well. I was like absolutely creaming my shots and we were just making some really small little tweaks um, and just going through a couple of little tips and tricks uh, when you find yourself in slightly more challenging areas on the course. Um, and I was just like, after a couple of attempts, I was really dialing them in. And I was like, wow, like I'm quite surprised at how well I'm picking all of this up during my lessons and sessions. And then I went and played golf afterwards with uh, my friend Neil and Nick, and I absolutely bombed. I was just absolutely awful. Like I, I think I hit probably 95% of my shots were bad. So um, I'm feeling a little bit nervous again after uh, what was a great session that morning. But anyway, I'm going to sign off now. I hope you have enjoyed this week's video and I look forward to seeing you next week, 5pm. Have a good one. Peace.